Eric is a 1994 graduate of the Broad College with a bachelor's degree in marketing and was first team academic All Big Ten in basketball. He has gone on to become a five-time number one best-selling author and has performed as a keynote speaker in over 55 countries, reaching over 50 million people. He was voted the second most likable author in the world behind Harry Potter's J.K. Rowling. His socialnomics work exploring how social media transforms everyday life and business has been on 60 Minutes to the Wall Street Journal and used by the National Guard to NASA. He is a current professor of digital leadership at Northwestern University and his materials are being used in over 500 universities. Eric is a former sitting professor at MIT and Harvard's X Labs and has received an honorary doctorate for his groundbreaking work. He is also the inventor of a best-selling board game, Kitty Corn. Most importantly, he's still trying to live up to the world's greatest dad coffee mug he received as a gift from his wife and two daughters. It is such a pleasure for us to have Eric with us here today to share his wisdom and perspective. He is truly a one-of-a-kind Broad Spartan. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Eric Coleman to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, how many of you, by a show of hands, how many of you want to be successful? How many of you want to fail? How many of you want to get your teeth kicked in? Now, all your hands should still be up because anyone that's ever succeeded at anything has failed. And what I want to give to you today is just three things. I want to tell you that it's all about being flossom. Number one, be flossom. Number two, be courageous. And number three, be kind. And when you think about number one, being flossom, people don't love us because we're perfect. They love us because we're perfectly flawed. And the only guarantee we have as we leave these doors tonight is that we will fail at something. You will lose. You will suck. <laughs> you will fall down. That's not a question, that's a fact. The question is how high you're going to bounce up when you fall. And for all of our future helicopter parents out there, when your kids fall, don't be there to catch them. Let them fall. Be there to applaud them and say, great job, you learned how to fall. Now let's see if you can learn how to get back up on your feet. And when we look at all these things that we have out there, it's really that everyone has a plan until you're punched in the face. It's after you get punched by life, how you react to that, that's what really matters. And as Spartans, you're gonna excel when that happens. Because I know this firsthand, I learned it firsthand right here in this building. Or actually, I learned it when I was born. You see, I was born with two teeth missing. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the extra dental work. But they spaced out the teeth, and I didn't realize many years later how that was going to help me out in this very building. So when I grew up, like a lot of you, you have dreams. And my parents always taught me that if you can dream it, you can do it. And they're here tonight, and they've been there every step of the way. So thank you to my parents and also my family to allow this moment to happen. Yeah, thank you. Even tonight, they're laying out those green glasses. So thank you. Thank you, Mom and Dad. But I was a dreamer. And the biggest dream I had was I wanted to play college basketball. So much so I had 50 of these miniature rubber basketballs in my room. I mean, my room smelled like a Goodyear factory. And I loved it. My parents, not so much. I even wrote my first, what I got in the love of writing is I wrote a magazine called Swish Magazine. So I had this dream of college basketball. But then in my junior year in high school, that dream looked like it had died. I was cut from my basketball team my junior year in high school. Yet, when I arrived here on campus, I, want, I love basketball still, and I want to be part of the program. So I became a student manager, a water boy. And I loved it. It was a grind, but I loved it. But you know what's funny about dreams? They continue to whisper at you. They never truly go away. They're there around every corner to taunt you and to tease you. And so there it was, like, you can do it. I know people think you're crazy, but you can do it. So my junior year, towards the end of my junior year, all of a sudden I had this epiphany. Gosh, I only have one year left to fulfill this dream. 
And like a lot of us out there, when you have these dreams, you hold them tight. You don't tell anyone because you're afraid to fail. But I realized I had one year left, so I go, I'm going to tell people. So I started with my older brother and my younger brother and friends and family. And I realized something that I'm passing on to you is that you have to tell people about your dreams because success doesn't happen alone. Those people that won't laugh at your dream, they're there to lift you up. It's on their shoulders that you're going to achieve your dreams. And so there it was. I put it all out there, and I realized that I needed to get stronger to be on the basketball team. So a lot of you, no offense, you put on the freshman 15, right? But I have you all beat. I put on the freshman 50. So I gained 50 pounds. I went from 160 to 210 pounds. I was eating Wisconsin cheesy chicken. I was eating stromboli down at Wonders. I was eating crinkly fries. And so I kept at it. And then I needed some luck to happen. So occasionally, with only 13 guys on the team, occasionally someone would get hurt or they'd be sick. They wouldn't have enough players. And they'd say, Quammen, we need a practice dummy. Go ahead and get in there. And that would happen once or twice a year. And so one of these moments happened. I go, this is the time. I've got to do it. And it's one of those moments where the skies opened up and the angels started singing and I couldn't do anything wrong. I was making all these shots. The rebounds were just bouncing my way. And then disaster struck, or more poignantly, fate struck. I took an elbow in the mouth, and it felt a jolt of pain go through my body. But I also felt something else in my mouth, some teeth. And so this was my moment. Nothing was going to stop me. So I put the teeth, hit them in a towel on the side, right over there, right over there in a chair, hit him in a towel and kept playing, spat some blood in a cup and kept playing. And then at a next time out, 15 minutes in, the, the trainer's going, hey, we need you. What, what happened? Are you okay? I go, yeah, yeah, those are just my fake teeth. We're good, no worries. <laughs> and at the next time out, after 15 minutes, the gig was up. He came over and he had in a glass of milk four teeth because they knocked out two real teeth as well. So I won't describe the, the trip to the, the doctor, the unsuccessful trip to the dentist, but on the whole ride over, like a lot of you, I was sitting there going, gosh, I can't believe this happened to me. In my moment, what rotten luck. I can't believe this happened to me. There goes my dream. Now, the next day at practice, Coach Izzo, I was catching up with yesterday, Coach Izzo, he goes, Qualman, I don't know if you're the dumbest guy I know or the toughest guy I know, but I think you're the dumbest guy I know. <laughs> and it's his way of saying, job well done. It was only several years later, looking back, that that's the greatest thing that could have happened to me. He didn't need another player to make shots. He needed someone that was willing to get knocked down and get back up. Because he's built the entire program, and that's what's beautiful about Spartans. He's built the entire program on that grit and that grind. And if you go up here, up here in the gym today, you'll see painted in big letters, players play, tough players win. That's true in life, and that's true in business. There are winners and there are losers. It's really about tough players. When you think about it, players play and tough players win. So as I pass to you, when you have that moment, when you get your teeth knocked in, you'll realize more times than not many years later that those moments that don't defeat us define us. Because the comeback is always greater than the setback. It'll actually be one of the greatest things that probably ever happens to you. Now, I'd be remiss if I'm up here in this arena and didn't tell one Coach Izzo story. And so we'd won a last second shot. And if you've ever seen Coach on TV, super animated, super excited, he comes flying in the locker room and he's like, Respert, your offense helped us win tonight. That helped us out a ton. Snow, your defense off the bench, man, that really helped us win tonight. And he jumped in front of my locker and he looked at me and paused and I hadn't played in the game. And he looked and goes, Quammen, you didn't play tonight. That probably helped us out the most. So embrace being flossom every day of your life. Second, be courageous. Be courageous. Have the courage to step into your story. It's interesting. It's really uncomfortable to step into your story at first, but long term, it's the most comfortable place that we can all live. Now, I'm going to tell you my story because I think we're all living the same movie. We're just different actors in that movie. So as I tell you why I wear these green glasses, you're gonna have or had your green glasses moment. And my hope is you don't do what I did and resist your story for 15 years. So I haven't always worn these crazy bright green glasses,
but I have always been called Eric Qualman. And so when you're handed your first email address out of school, it's your first initial last name, so I became Equal Man. <laughs> and I absolutely hated it. Because you're at a Cadillac internship, and all of a sudden, they go, oh man, we're out of coffee. Well, Equal Man, you got that superhero name, I bet you're super fast, why don't you go get us some coffee? <laughs> so I didn't like it, I resisted it for 15 years. And in a moment in time, I realized, wait, this is happening for me, not to me. So my third book was doing well, it's called What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. And <laughs> take advice on that one. And, and so we sat down for an interview with a magazine and they wanted to take a, a shot for the cover. And they said, hey, with your superhero like email address, do you mind if we give you some Clark Kent like Superman glasses? I said, yeah, no, that sounds fun. And they go, uh, do you mind if they're green? It's our St. Patty's edition. I go, great, bring them out. And they bring them out. I'm like, whoa, those are like alien green, but we'll take it. We take that shot. And then a couple weeks later, I fly to Kenya to give a talk. It's my first time in Kenya, so I really wanted to understand what Kenya was all about. And so I was going to a rescue shelter to adopt a baby cheetah. Uh, not to take home, my wife would, would absolutely kill me, but just to <laughs> support the local area. On the ride over, the woman that I'm with, she looks at me and she goes, you know, we had Usain Bolt, the Olympic sprinter here just two days ago, and he adopted from the same litter that you're going to adopt from, and we filmed him, and we'd like to film you. Uh, do you mind? I'm like, no, that's great. Let's do it. We can raise more awareness for the shelter. And then she pauses and she looks at me and she goes, but obviously when we're filming, we want to make sure you're wearing the green glasses. And I go, oh, I don't wear those around all the time. People would be staring at me. I wouldn't like that. And the look of disappointment on that face, I could still see it today. I never wanted to see that look of disappointment again. And it was my realization, wait, this isn't happening to me. It's happening for me. It's time to step fully into my story. It's time to step into becoming equal man. And even though it's uncomfortable, if there's one person that I can help by wearing these green glasses, then it's worth stepping into that discomfort each and every day. And I realized something else that I read as a kid is that those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. And so I realized it's all up to us when it comes to courage to step into your story, step into it. And then all these world of possibilities open up that you never anticipate. So then I had some schools reach out and they said, hey, do you mind if we use the green glasses on Fridays once a month to remind the kids and the teachers and the bus drivers that it's about being kind above all? And it started a kindness campaign and these students started to wear these glasses one Friday every month. And I never thought that would happen. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't taken that step. And that's so true. If you never take that step forward, then you're always in the same place. And you might not be able to help those people that you should be helping. So I tell you that story so you don't do what I did and resist your story for 15 years. Step into that discomfort. Step fully into your story. And it leads me to my third point. It's all about being kind. We want to unlock and unleash our superpowers to help the world. But it's easy for me to sit up here and say, go out there and fail fast, fail forward, fail better, go out and be flossom, go out there and be courageous. But our brain's always designed to protect us. And so your brain, that voice in your head will start to say, hold on a second, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't take that step. So sometimes we need to use our bodies to help our minds and basically tell that negative voice to shut up. And so what we're going to do here today, I've done a lot of research around superheroes and now we've done this in 56 countries. It turns out if you actually stand like a superhero, that it can help suppress the fear in our mind, reduce the stress by up to 15%, that cortisol that's pinging around in our bodies. And so if you don't mind, put on your glasses or we're going to stand up and actually stand like superheroes. So you're wondering what the heck's a superhero stand like. So this is what you want to do. You want to take a deep breath. 
Think about a string that's pulling you up to the ceiling here. So you're standing up as tall as possible, and we want to take our hands, we're going to make those into fists, and we're going to put those on our belt line. And most importantly, you're going to take a wider stance than you normally would, a power pose, if you will. So you're like this. Now, this is called the Superman. If you want to do the Wonder Woman, it's just a slight head tilt like this or like that. Personally, I like that better. Um, if you're ever talking at Comic-Con, if you want to do Aquaman, whatever you want, you want to do Batman, word of advice, if you're ever talking to people from Comic-Con, do not mention superhero and Batman in the same sentence. That'll win you the chance with 500 enthusiasts to tell you why Batman's not a superhero. <laughs> all right, so we're standing like this, and all you have to do is stand like this, like superheroes. So if you guys could do that, that'd be fantastic. If you do this for two minutes, it helps reduce that stress in your body. All right, thanks for doing that. You guys can take a seat. Thank you. I recommend you not do that in the elevator. It really freaks people out. But, <laughs> Well, when you think about it, we're all superheroes. It's really about, when you think about the meaning of life, it's discovering your gifts, your superpowers, and the purpose is to give those superpowers or those gifts away. And that's the true definition of being a superhero. Now, a lot of us here, you'll hear, well, step into your superpowers, step into your passion, step into your gifts. But some of us are probably sitting there going, well, I don't know what my passion is. And for a lot of us, that's true. And I've talked to people that are 18 to 85. It's certainly true for a lot of folks. And so what you want to do over the next six weeks is you want to write down each and every day, was it a good day? Was it a plus one, plus two, plus three? Good day. Was it a bad day? Minus one, minus two, minus three. And just write down why. Just a short sentence why. And then in a couple of weeks, you'll start to see a pattern. And a day's never neutral, right? I didn't, say, I didn't say zero. Day's never neutral. Just like in business, you're either growing or you're shrinking. But over time, when you do that, you'll start to see a pattern in a couple of weeks. And that's on what brings you the most joy. What's giving you those plus two and those plus three days? And that, my friends, is that secret signal, that guidepost, that secret guidepost to your superpower. Now, when you think about superpowers, the greatest superpowers aren't flying or x-ray vision or jumping over buildings, although that would be cool, and we'd probably get a lot more dates if we could do that. <laughs> but the greatest superpowers are those powers that we use to help others. And you think about that from a business standpoint and a life standpoint, no matter what you go into, no matter what business you start or nonprofit you start or which nonprofit or business you contribute to, the end goal, no matter what field you're in, will always be the same. It's always creating a smile. It's creating a smile for that teammate, that customer, that client. Because if you're not creating smiles, you won't be in business very long. You'll not be successful. So my hope is when we all wake up tomorrow morning, it's counterintuitive, but I don't wish for you to wish for you to be successful. My hope is you wake up with the goal of being helpful. Because when you do that, success will always find you. And when we think about it, we've heard this phrase throughout most of our life, that nice people finish last. Well, I'm here to tell you, nice people don't finish last. Nice people finish happy. And so as you go out there in the world, my hope is that you're number one, that you're gonna be Flossom. Number two, you're gonna be courageous. And number three, you're gonna be kind. But most importantly, if it doesn't challenge us, it certainly won't change us. If you never take a step forward, you'll always be standing in the same place. If you never ask for anything, the answer will always be no. And if you can dream it, you can do it. We're all superheroes here. We just need that courage to wear that cape. We need the courage to step into the greatest story ever written, your story. Who will? You will. Spartans will. Congratulations, you did it. Go green. Go green. Go green, thank you.